Welcome to the Sant Mat Satsang Podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Today, the human body is the true temple of the spirit. This life is a golden opportunity for the liberation of the soul. It is only a very few fortunate ones who get the opportunity to do Simran and do the meditation. Also exploring today the seven stages of mystic ascension according to Sant Mat. Ingredients of a living spiritual path, seven Gnostic Sant Mat parallels, plus a little bit of an explanation of why a Sant Mat program would also include Nag Hammadi texts occasionally, like the Gospel of Thomas. A bit of history behind that. I'll share with you a reading from the Gospel of Thomas, some commentary, and from some Syriac mystics. A mystic poem of Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, and many, many discourses by Baba Ram Singh on how the human body is the true temple of the spirit, and life is a golden opportunity to pursue spiritual growth and development, even though only a few seem to care about this sort of endeavor and actually do the meditation. Up first, seven stages of mystic ascension to heaven, according to Sant Mat. And this is based on the book, The Harmony of All Religions, by Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj. Chapter 7, Sant Mat, a term that means the way of the saints, or path of the masters. Number one, praise or bhakti, love and devotion. Singing praises, singing hymns. These hymns are known as banis, sometimes they're called bhajans, kirtans, basically odes, psalms, hymns, but only hymns composed by saints. Number two, prayer, a fairly familiar concept. Prayer, communion with God, conversations with God. Three, manas jap, mental repetition of a sacred name or sacred names done within one's thoughts, with the tongue of thought, as they say. This mantra repeated mentally is also referred to as Simran, and the Sufis call it Zikr. Both the term Zikr and Simran have the same meaning, which is remembrance, the remembrance of God, the practice of the presence of God by repeating a sacred name of God or several different sacred names of God. This tradition is also called the prayer of the name or praying without ceasing, practicing the presence of God. It goes by, by many different names in different traditions. It is the repetition, the chanting of a name or names of God. Now this can be done out loud, even in the Sant tradition, for short periods of time. But then it's taken within, moved to something done within one's mind, a mental chant or a manas jap. And this, of course, is the first stage of meditation as well. The repetition of names of God is the first stage of meditation. Number four, manas dhyan, a mental visualization visualizing the form of one's master. And this is another stage of meditation. Simran, that I talked about earlier, is one getting accustomed to listening within. And the technique of visualizing the form of one's spiritual teacher is a technique that gets you to look within. Number five, Dristi Sadhana, seeing inner light at the third eye center. This isn't visualizing anymore. This is real light seen, the manifestation of spiritual light seen within 
as one reaches the third eye center. And this is the third stage of meditation practice in the Sant tradition. Number six, Nada Sadna, sometimes referred to as Nada Yoga or Surat Shabda Yoga, hearing the inner sounds, transcendental hearing. This is the fourth stage of meditation. There is sound coming from beyond the silence. It might be a ringing tone or a hum or crickets or many different possible sounds, flute sound, ocean waves. There are many possible sounds. So there is light from beyond the darkness and there is sound coming from beyond the silence, transcendental seeing and hearing very much the focus of Sant Mat meditation. And the final stage, number seven, reaching Kavalya, oneness with the Supreme Being, oneness with soundlessness, the Supreme Being who is veiled by light and sound and yet is beyond the worlds of forms, lights and sounds and visions and auditions. Oneness with the soundless being, the nameless one, also referred to as Anami Parush, referring to the formless supreme being beyond time, space, form, at the top level of creation, also referred to by some as Radha Swami, the Lord of the Soul. This is the supreme state, the ocean of love and all consciousness beyond all forms, lights and sounds, the fifth stage of meditation. And this is the goal of the path. The theological term for Santmat is Narguna Bhakti, devotion to the formless Supreme Being. Devotion to the Supreme Being who is beyond form, beyond time, beyond light and sound as well. My favorite term is Anurag Sagar, the ocean of love, the supreme being. So with all of these seven stages of mystic ascension, you see a logical progression, a sense of love and devotion, singing hymns, and then this turns to a conversational kind of prayer, and then the repetition of a name or names of God, which can be done out loud verbally, very briefly but becomes a mental sort of chant which takes you within. Visualizing the form of the teacher also is a warm-up exercise that allows you to focus within, get accustomed to that concept. And then comes the real seeing and the real hearing. Dristi sadhana, seeing inner light at the third eye center. Nada sadhana, also known as Surat Shabd Yoga or Shabad Yoga hearing within. And then finally, this leads to just oneness with the Supreme Being, the drop merging back into the ocean, the drop soul merging into the ocean of God. A living spiritual path like Sant Ma is rather fond of quoting earlier saints that are recognized as true masters of the past. Quite often, Sants will quote Rumi or Shams of Tabriz, Hafez, Baba Farid, Hazrat Sultan Bahu. There are many Sufi mystics that are seen as true masters of the past. And before the Sufis, we have these Syriac mystics, Christian mystics, various Gnostics, Sethians and Valentinians, Manichaeans, followers of the Hermetic philosophy, Jewish mysticism or Kabbalah, all that have had saints. These are all schools of spirituality that have produced saints and texts that uh, have survived. And, of course, earlier still, Platonism and the Pythagoreans, 
with Pythagoras being one of the great sages of the Western world. By way of Mesopotamia and the Syriac tradition, there was a kind of transmission historically from West to East. A lot of Platonist, Pythagorean, Gnostic, Jewish mysticism, Christian mysticism, Gnosticism type ideas and spiritual practices were transmitted through Mesopotamia, through the Aramaic language, the Syriac language, the Syriac dialect of Aramaic, and that same region uh, of Mesopotamia and Persia is where Sufism came to be, and of course Sufism had a major presence in India. East did meet West, and there's been a lot of back and forth between East and West. So as soon as some of these Gnostic writings were unearthed in Egypt, they became favorites of certain Sant Mat initiates, Satsangis. John Davidson has a number of books out. Russell Perkins wrote a book called The Stranger of Galilee. Uh, many decades ago, actually, Russell Perkins at the St. Bonnie Ashram in Franklin, New Hampshire, San Bornton area uh, of New Hampshire, did a whole series of satsang talks based on the Gospel of Thomas. And those were recorded on cassette tape, and uh, I, I don't think that those have ever made it to the World Wide Web. Correct me if I'm wrong, or if anyone has copies of those old Russell Perkins Gospel of Thomas Sot songs from Sant Bonnie, uh, feel free to contact me. Let's put those on the web, right? Let's put those online. Those were amazing. And after he concluded with the Gospel of Thomas series, these Sunday morning Sot songs at Sant Bonnie Ashram, commenting on the Gospel of Thomas from a Sant Mott point of view, he moved on to another series called uh, the Anurag Sagar satsang series. Now that series is online. Some old uh, cassette tapes that were dubbed off onto MP3 and uploaded. And now I have a better quality MP3, a very bright clear MP3 version. I don't think anyone has put those online yet, so maybe I should do that. Um, and if anyone already knows of, about those being online someplace already, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to link to some site that has those already. So the Gnostic texts uh, are something that Sant Mod initiates have quoted going back many decades, actually, pointing out that inner light is referred to in Gnostic texts. Inner sound, the ascension of the soul, it's all right there. Vegetarianism, it's all right there. And so, of course, it's a natural for Sant Mot Satsangis, initiates, to quote those old Gnostic texts. Some of those saints and mystics around before the time of the Sufis. Ingredients of a Living Spiritual Path Seven Gnostic Sant Mot Parallels in the Corpus Hermeticum of Egypt and the Nag Hammadi scriptures are described all of the ingredients of a living, viable, mystic path like Sant Mat. One, living masters, living teachers with students, not just past masters, scrolls, cuneiform tablets, old scriptures. Those are not enough. A living guide is required. There's always someone sitting underneath the Bodhi tree, and there is a circle of disciples surrounding them. Not a book under the Bodhi tree with a series of books surrounding the tree, but actual living people, living disciples, living masters. Number one, living masters, living teachers with students. A living guide is required is present at the beginning when a spiritual path is alive, when a mystical tradition is functioning. Number two, a cosmology of several different heavens, inner regions, sometimes called planes or spheres of creation. 
Three, an understanding that souls can access these realms here and now during this present life. In other words, it is a present tense kingdom of heaven that is presented as being available to souls right now. These heavens, something of them, some inkling, some glimpse of them can be had here and now by living human beings. In other words, heaven is not just for dead people. And the spiritual life, the contemplative life, is not postponed till some magical date on the calendar, at the end of time, or hypothesized future age, or after death only, uh, something someplace else that is untouchable and unverifiable in a kind of scientific, spiritual sort of way. Number three, an understanding that souls can access these realms here and now, during this present life, through a spiritual practice. It's not about after death, this will happen, or at the second coming, or in some future age, someplace else, in the by and by, or in the sky. Number four, an initiation into the mysteries of the heavens, imparting to spiritual seekers the meditation techniques and sacred names, whereby they may explore within, they may go within, and see for themselves and hear for themselves. Initiation into the Mysteries. Number five, visionary and auditory mysticism. Inner seeing, inner hearing, spiritual eyes, spiritual ears to hear, inner light and sound, and descriptions of souls traveling within through the various regions. Quite often in India, Great mystics will compose hymns or poems describing these inner regions. Number six, they have an ethical code. And this ethical foundation, consisting of several different precepts, nonviolence, truthfulness, and so on, also includes a vegetarian diet. The great mystics of inner light and sound throughout the generations of time have always been vegans or vegetarians without exception, including Sufis. You know, people assume that, well, Rumi must have followed a halal diet or kosher, essentially a kosher kind of diet. Not so. It may become obscured over time, the vegetarianism of famous Sufis like Rabia of Basra or the great Rumi. But you know what? There are traditions that have been preserved. I've done podcasts on this, in fact, that show that they, too, were also vegetarian. All the great mystics, all the great masters, if they are going within, if there is an inward focus on exploration of the kingdom of the heavens, an ascension of the soul through various heavenly realms, any school of spirituality like that has included vegetarianism. And finally, number seven, because things always end in seven. You know, seven is a favorite number. The goal of the teachings and meditation practice is experiencing direct union with God. God is the goal. Merging with the Supreme Being is the destination, is the goal of the path, is the reason for the meditation is the reason for this whole thing. Coming up next, the Gospel of Thomas. I want to share a reading from, this is actually a a translation found in a new New Testament, the Hal Tasig translation. I happen to like this particular rendering of saying 70, or part of uh, saying 70 from the Gospel of Thomas. When you give birth to the one within you, that one will save you. When you give birth to the one within you, that one will save you. Gospel of Thomas, excerpted from Saying 70, found in a new New Testament. 
edited by Hal Tossig. An absence or ignorance of the divine in this material existence is poverty, according to the Gospel of Thomas, a poverty of flesh without spirit, drowning in materialism, or thinking that poverty is all there is, nothing else. Bringing forth that which is within, or giving birth to that which is within, is knowledge, gnosis, experience of the soul, and the spiritual realm it is connected to, the kingdom of God, the light, in order to become a person of light, see Gospel of Thomas saying 24, to be astonished by the manifestation of the inner light, see the Gospel of Thomas saying 2, and entering into heavenly rest in the stillness, to use this opportunity of life to come into being, come into being as you pass away, a translation of saying 42 of the Gospel of Thomas. In other words, by spiritual practice, by meditation practice, we get established in the heavenly realms during this life, finding a home in permanence there instead of remaining attached to samsara, this material world of changes or impermanence, thinking that that is the only choice, the only option, just material existence, and that's all there is. To become free from that, to connect to the heavenly realms, not just after death, not just in the future, not just at the end of time or during some millennium or future golden age or yuga, but right here, right now. As it says in the Gospel of Philip, which is categorized as a Valentinian Gnostic text, if you don't experience the light now, you won't experience it in the other place. So the idea is to make spiritual progress during this life, and that is something you can take with you. Coming up next, readings from Syriac Mystics. The Syriac mystic Materius, on the womb of contemplative meditation practice, giving birth to the realization of the soul. Happy is that person of love who has caused God, who is love, to dwell in his heart. Happy are you, O heart, so small and confined, and yet you have caused him whom heaven and earth cannot contain to dwell spiritually in your womb as in a restful abode. Happy that luminous eye of the heart which in its purity purely beholds him before whose sight the seraphs or angels veil their face. Blessed indeed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are you, O heart, that is luminous, the abode of the divinity. Blessed are you, heart that is pure, which beholds the hidden being. Some mystic poetry from Materius, a Syriac mystic, translated in the book The Syriac Fathers on Prayer and the Spiritual Life, and from that same collection of Syriac mystics, Aramaic Syriac saints, John the Elder. Do you want this love to be continually inflamed in your soul, then remove from your soul love for the world. Are you desirous that your abode would be in that place which is without place, being in God? Leave the world as a baby leaves the womb, then you will have seen reality. John the Visionary, also from the Syriac Fathers on Prayer and the Spiritual Life. May my person become a holy temple for you. May I be aware in my whole being of your majesty. May I become a womb for you in secret. Then do you come and dwell in me. 
and I will receive you openly, taking delight spiritually in the Holy of Holies of my thoughts. That reference, Holy of Holies, refers to the innermost sanctum of the original Jerusalem temple, the place where God dwells. Many temples of the world actually illustrate the human body. And so within the human form, the true temple of the Spirit is the real Holy of Holies, the place where God lives, where God exists. In the center of our being, the divine ground of being. And through the womb of contemplative meditation practice, we give birth to realizations like this. We are soul. We are part of the heavenly realms. And we can experience the divine here and now through the womb of meditation. Seek to see God now, liberation during this life, a mystic poem of St. Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. In this life, the concept of salvation all describe, or in the religions of the world, all describe. To meet the Lord by dying while living, none discloses. They all speak of the goal of salvation after death. How to attain it while living, no one says. Were they to reveal the method of attaining release while living, then alone would Tulsi be convinced of their words. Who speak after seeing with their own eyes and teach the method of salvation during life are of the stage and stature of saints, for they reveal the quintessence of the soul. The human body is the true temple. This life is a golden opportunity for the liberation of the soul. It is only a very few fortunate ones who get the opportunity to do Simran and do the meditation. Some discourses by Baba Ram Singh, along with a quote from Sant Kripal Singh. It is with the good karmas of tens of millions of years and lives that one gets a human life, and it is with the grace of God Almighty that we get the company of the saints and are able to do meditation. This body has been given by God Almighty, and it is only the body, in the body, where one can transcend from a human being to God Almighty himself. It is not only flesh and blood, but it is a temple which has been created by God Almighty. In this body, God Almighty has kept 16 planes, and he has kept the path to go back to God Almighty within the body itself. Within the body itself. If someone has got God Almighty, it is only within this six-foot temple. And even in the future, if someone is going to go and meet God, it will be through this medium only, this sentient form, this human form, this man body, as Kripal Singh would call it. Baba Ram Singh, after we go through these 8.4 million life forms, God Almighty graces us with the small time frame that we get in this human body. He gives this so that we may take this opportunity to get out of the cycle and go back to meet God Almighty, Baba Ram Singh. Rise above body consciousness and meditation and see for yourself. This is from Baba Ram Singh. How to know oneself. It is a matter not of the level of feelings or emotions or drawing inferences. 
This is purely a subject of self-analysis, knowing oneself and knowing God. Higher consciousness can only be experienced or risen into, I would say, if our own consciousness is first all devoid of all outer coverings. So it is a matter of pure self-analysis, how to rise above body consciousness. A quote from Sant Kripal Singh. This is from Baba Ram Singh. When we sit for our meditation, we do Simran and we do Dhyan, or we contemplate on the form of the Master. When we do that, our karmas keep getting redeemed, and as our karmas are redeemed, our mind becomes more sublime. And once the mind becomes sublime, it becomes still, and we are able to focus at the eye center. When we do this regularly, one day the attention of the soul gets focused at the eye center, and we are able to leave this body. There the master who has given you initiation is waiting for you, and you will get to meet him there. Saints come into this world and they enlighten us. They remind us of our true home of God Almighty, our true Father. They encourage us to go back and they motivate us to go back. So we are indeed fortunate to get this human form and get this life. And it is with the grace of God Almighty that we have the company of the masters. Now we should make the most of that and follow the teachings of the masters and make efforts to go back to our true home. Baba Ram Singh says, Morning time is ideal for meditation, but any time is good if we are sitting for meditation. Guru Nanak in the Adi Granth, the Guru Granth says, Praise Nanak, but for the society of the saints, the whole world is false. This harkens back to the first point of the, the seven Gnostic Sant Mat parallels. The need for a living master, not a scripture, not a cuneiform tablet, not a channeled being allegedly from some other time, some other place, but a living teacher in the here and now. But for the society of the saints, the whole world is false, says Guru Nanak. In the Guru-given Gnosis is contained the wealth of the Lord's name, and the Lord's name, the Guru, imprints in the mind of man. A passage from the Adi Granth, the Sikh scriptures of India. Meet a Sat Guru and take his initiation, receive his initiation. Surrender thine all and peep within, says Guru Nanak. Again, Guru Nanak here is saying, Meet a Sat Guru. He is not saying meet a book or a scripture of the past. He is saying meet a living teacher. Meet a Sat Guru and receive his initiation. Surrender thine all and peep within, gaze within, advised Guru Nanak. The sound current meditation, Shabad Nam, Anhad Nad, Anhad Shab, the unstruck sound according to the Sikh scriptures of India, the Adi Granth or Guru Granth. Within me rings the unstruck melody of the Lord's flute, yea, he in whose presence one's mind is attuned to the sound of the inner music, said Kabir. He, the Lord, is immersed in the unstruck melody of the word, it says in the Sikh scriptures. The Lord's name has no form and it becomes manifest through the Immaculate God as the unstruck melody. There is a divine sound, a true name of God, a higher form of name beyond a spoken or alphabetical name. And that true name of God is a name that repeats itself eternally in the inner regions. And this is another way of saying the sound current or inner sound meditation. The inner sound is the true name above every other name, referred to as the Logos, the Word, the Tao, the Anhad Shabd, the Anhad Nad, the unstruck melody. 
played by the divine musician. The divine string is plucked by the divine musician, not an earthly musician. The drum is not beat by a human hand, but there is a thunder or drum sound reverberating in heavenly realms, and it is the work, the handiwork of the divine musician. Within me rings the unstruck melody of the Lord's flute, yea, he in whose presence one's mind is attuned to the sound of the inner music, said Guru Kabir in a passage found in the Sikh scriptures of India. The human body is the true temple of the spirit, and this life is a golden opportunity for the liberation of the soul. The goal of Sant Mat is to go within and experience, to see for ourselves, hear for ourselves, to explore the heavens that are within. Through the guidance of a living master, the meditation instructions are given. We are given the names and descriptions of the inner regions, the lights and the sounds that serve as markers along the way, and we are motivated by messages from the Living Master to keep meditating, keep at it, keep meditating each and every day. Thanks for joining me today for the Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. Visit my website, spiritualawakeningradio.com.